Hello, I'm Michael Casper, coming to you from the grounds of AirVenture 2014. What's shaping up to be one of the biggest air ventures to date began on a somber note today as a small gathering of family, close friends, and EAA members said goodbye to aviation legend and EAA founder Paul Poberezny. Well, good evening. Let's have a let's have an EAA good evening in return. It's it's the Sunday before the event. Let's try that again. Good evening. Good evening. There we go. There we go. I want to welcome everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Jack Pelton, the chairman of the EAA board, and we thought that we'd start the week off uh, in a special way. You know, as you know, we lost our founder Paul Pobrezny at the end of last year, and there's been something that he created here that's very very special in the memorial wall, and I thought it would be a wonderful time before the event starts. Uh, to be able to have the opportunity to dedicate Paul's plaque individually uh, before we do our normal ceremony at the end of the week. And so we are very, very lucky today to be able to do that. And we have in attendance today Paul's wife, Audrey, their daughter, Paul's daughter, Bonnie, and her husband, Chuck Parnell, Paul's granddaughter, Audra, with her husband, Mike Hoy, and Paul's granddaughter, Charlie, in attendance here today with us, which we are very blessed and honored to have that happen. I want to just talk for one minute before I hand it over to the, the pastor about the Memorial Wall. Because Paul had a vision in 1988 about finding a way to be able to honor those EA members and dedicated aviation folks that had been part of the association here on these wonderful facilities that we have in Oshkosh. And so he came up with the idea of this Memorial Wall. And in 1988, he challenged members to bring stones from wherever they live within the country to be able to use them to build this wall. And when you get time later during the week or this, this evening, and you look at the different stones that are on the sides and the back, it, it really reflects you know, what a, a diverse and inclusive group we are at EA from all over, not only the United States, but the, but the world. And the centerpiece of it was his four-bladed cross that was uh, very cleverly architected in the middle. We have panels for each year's dedication ceremony for this year for 2014. And where Paul's inscription is, it will actually, it's on the, on the back of the wall as we continue to fill that out. So I think that's important to kind of ground us in, again, Paul's feeling about family, about values, about all of the things that are important. And it's, as he's always said, it's not the airplanes, it's the people that bring us all together. And it's the respect of those who have all come together to honor them for their past. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Riddick. Thanks, Jack. Well, I had the privilege of knowing Paul and uh, his family, and uh, so it's an honor to be uh, here tonight and uh, just to share a few thoughts with you. First, there's a passage that all of us, I think, are aware of some way, uh, either by song or actually by the passage itself. It's Isaiah chapter 40, and he says, uh, God says, to whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and his mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you say and complain? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And so all of us, I think, have at least heard the music to a song to that effect. And I, I just know that the, this wall reminds us of how temporary life is. And the older that we get, the more vulnerable we feel. And the more we realize how limited our strength and our wisdom is. And so, uh, at a place like this, uh, we take time to admit that. 
These are all words I think that some of you know about, things that you know about Paul. The impact of his life on people in aviation would be impossible to overestimate or even to understand. Uh, what became Paul's mission, his core values, and his innate abilities shaped EAA's culture and organization for over 60 years. From the love of aviation in the heart of a five-year-old who once said, every day of my life I have spoken the word airplane, to the answer to a question that was asked him uh, near his death, uh, every day of my life, uh, what are you thinking, he was asked. He said, airplanes. And asked which airplane he didn't like, he said, I love them all and they love me. Um, he pursued his passion and he encouraged the rest of us to do the same. And he cheered us on. The book, Poberesny, the story begins, is dedicated to uh, Leslie and Audra in which he says to his granddaughters, may you have the courage and dedication to pursue your dreams, the teachers with the vision to help you find your way, and the love for your fellow man, gonk. Well, I just say that, that Paul lived that out. He pursued his dream and his vision and his passion and a lot of times we we get locked in not doing that of course I'm actually speaking to the choir who's doing that uh, so those of you who are here tonight you've been here because you're pursuing dream and passion uh, of aviation or have friends who are he had dreams and he pursued them he built his first airplane factory when he was eight years old in his father's chicken coop uh, when he was still in grade school he would go out on recess and he would climb out on a limb that would bend and then he would fall into the water so that when he came back to class he would be wet and his teacher would send him home and then he would go to his factory and work on airplanes. Uh, in one innocent moment of faith by a high school teacher, uh, it became the turning point uh, of his life. He learned that there was a model airplane club in his high school called Wings. His history teacher was uh, Mr. Homer Tagney. He noticed Paul's genuine interest in airplanes. And one day when he was 15 years old, he had an encounter with his teacher uh, that changed his life, but not only his life, but aviation history. Uh, he said to Paul one day after school, he asked him if he would be interested in a battered and damaged Waco primary trainer. He said he would give it to Paul if uh, he agreed to complete the restoration Paul agreed, and, well, you know kind of the rest of the story of that. Uh, things I think about when I think about Paul. Uh, I think about that he gave us, he en enabled us, the Wright Flyers, the Wright Brothers, gave us the gift of motorized flight. But Paul Poberesny gave us the gift of flight that became a reality for the common man, the common person. He lo his love never failed for the organization he guided into back in 1953 in his home with his wife and uh, building a whole network of friends that uh, helped. He was a leader of men and women. And Paul was a doer. There's a lot of people who are talkers. Paul was a doer. He always had a project going. Even up until the very last little bit, he had a project going on. And so uh, he w his life would tell us to uh, pursue our passion, to be doers and not just talkers, but to be busy about it. But another thing that this wall actually reminds us of is that Paul also valued family and friends. Those of you who have led volunteer organizations know the difficulty and the, uh, of running an organization and getting the amount of help that you need to pull it off. Well, EAA is an organization of volunteers, and there is a little secret to what makes this organization really work. And that is deep down inside the organization, there is a bond between family and friends in their passion for aviation. And I think it was that relational component uh, that is a model to us. One more thing about uh, Paul's uniqueness and what he gave us. This is the most unique spot in the whole country. 
My uh, mom passed away many years ago. She's buried in North Central Missouri. The last day I was to her funeral at a gravesite, and I know, I'm sorry, I don't live in that area, was that day. This is the place where we, my mother is on this wall, where we can come every year to a pilgrimage, and rather than, in a sense, have the sorrow of, of that memory, we actually celebrate who they were and the lessons that they give us, they gave us, and they're modeling for us. This is a unique place in all the country. You can come every year, and the last day of the convention, Sunday, there's another service uh, just like this, and people come from around the globe, and they honor and they remember their friends. And so I think that all of us are indebted to Paul for those things. I'd like to lead us in a moment of prayer. Gracious Father, I thank you for giving in the deep-seated desire in our hearts to explore, to be pioneers, uh, to rule and subdue, as you say it, in the Garden Commission. And so we have that in our heart, and those who are aviators know what that desire is. Father, I thank you for the gift of life every day, the time for friends, the gift of friendship. Even having a close friend or two or three is a gift in life. And so often we're so busy we don't take time for one another. And yet that's exactly one of the things that Paul taught us is to take time for friends and family. So we thank you for that gift to us. Help us to value every day. It's too brief. The days pass too quickly. And I just ask, based on this passage we read, to teach us to learn, to admit our vulnerabilities, uh, to learn to reach out to others around us and encourage them, uh, and to admit to you that we are vulnerable and that we need you in our life. Thank you for the gift of life. We pray this in your name. Amen. There's a missing man flyover that's going on right about now. I think.